Hey everybody, this is Dr. Ominde. I want to take you through the basic um, tissues in the body, the histology. So we'll start um, with epithelial tissue, but you need to remember that um, we have four basic tissues in the body, epithelial, connective tissue, muscle, and nervous tissue. What is a tissue? A tissue is a group of cells that subserve similar uh, function and usually they have similar structure so together they subserve a common function where do we find epithelial tissue in the body coverings body linings and glandular tissue and what's a function protection like the skin absorption like in the GI filtration like in the kidney tubule and secretion like in uh, glands there are five characteristics of epithelial tissue the cells are closely opposed together and form sheets, so they are close to each other. Then the cells lie on a basement membrane, and then this makes the cell polarize. You have a basal surface, which is on the lower part near the basement membrane, and a free apical surface on top. Epithelium has no blood supply, it's therefore vascular, and it's well, if well nourished, it's able to regenerate easily. So we have specializations of epithelial tissue based on this, the, uh, this the location of the cell. So the basal aspect of the cell has specializations, the apical surfaces and the lateral surfaces. So these cell junctions are usually on the, the lateral specializations of the cells of epithelia. So you have occluding junctions that form impermeable barrier. A good example are the zonular occludens, the tight junctions. Then we have anchoring junctions that provide mechanical stability, like zonular adherence containing actin filament and the macular adherence or desmosomes that contain intermediate filament. Then lastly, you have communicating junctions. These are gap junctions that allow selective diffusion of molecules, mainly ions. Okay, so these are lateral specializations, occluding junctions, anchoring junctions, and communicating junctions with examples, zonular occludens and occluding junction, zonular adherence and macular adherence as anchoring junctions and gap junctions as communicating junctions. Of the apical surfaces of the cells of the epithelium, we have specializations such as microvilli, which are cytoplasmic processes that increase surface area. They form what you call a brush border. We can ask you list two areas where you find microvilli in the small intestine, so ileum, duodenum, jejunum. You also see microvilli in the gallbladder, and we also see microvilli in the proximal convoluted tubules of the kidney, so they look like brush border. Stereocilia are long immortal microvilli, usually in two areas, the inner ear and the epithelium of male genital ducts, like in the epididymis, you have stereocilia. So name two areas with stereocilia, inner ear and epididymis. Cilia are motile, cytoplasmic processes. Why are they motile? Because they contain microtubules, okay? So they are located in the upper respiratory airway, like in the roof of the nasal cavity, the trachea and the larynx, but you also see them in the fallopian tubes. On the basal surface, the cells of the epithelium lie on a basement membrane and there is a basal lamina that is evident on electron microscope. It contains a lamina rara and a lamina densa and lamina rara contains intergreens, fibronectin and laminin receptors while lamina densa contain type 4 collagen. Basement membrane has type 4 collagen. We also have laminin and proteoglycan such as heparin sulfate, chondroitin sulfate and proteoglycan. So this can come in your MCQs. So we have reticular lamina in the basement membrane and the basement membrane is visible on electron microscope using periodic acid shift stain that's why we say it is pass positive classification of epithelium okay so this picture just gives you um, um you can see the basal surface of epithelium and apical surface to show you that epithelium is polarized so you can classify epithelium based on location is it a lining epithelium or a glandular epithelium? Number two, based on the number of layers. One layer, simple, many layers, stratified. Based on the shape, flattened cells, squamous epithelium. Cube shape where length and height is the same, cuboidal epithelium. When they're taller than wider, that's columnar epithelium. So we have simple squamous epithelium, a single layer of flattened cells. What is the function? Diffusion. How is it adapted for function? It is thin because it's a single layer and the cells are flattened. So you decrease the distance for diffusion. Where do we find simple squamous epithelium? The lining of body cavities like pleura, peritoneum, 
and pericardium and lining of the lungs and capillaries or blood vessels, okay, arteries, veins, they're all simple squamous. So as you can see, this is the lungs and you can see the flattened cells, one layer of flattened cells. Simple cuboid or one layer of cube-like cells function for excretion, secretory and absorption. Where do we find them? In glands and their ducts. A good example, an inactive thyroid gland, then the coverings of the ovary are simple cuboidal epithelium, and then the kidney tubules, proximal and convoluted tubules, have simple cuboidal epithelium. Name four areas with simple cuboidal epithelium. So that's simple cuboidal. These are kidney tubules, okay? And these are the brush border, the microvilla I told you, located within the proximal convoluted tubule. See the single layer of cells and they're cuboidal in shape. Simple columnar, single layer of tall cells, mainly absorptive and secretory. So we find them in the GIT for secretion and absorption. So any part of the GIT from the stomach, the duodenum, ileum, jejunum, colon, they're all simple columna, even the rectum. Okay, so tall cells lying on a basement membrane, simple one layer of cells. Then we have pseudostratified columnar. Pseudo means false, falsely stratified. Why is it falsely stratified? It's one layer of cells. Each cell lays on the basement membrane, but the nuclei of these cells are in different levels, making the epithelium looking like it has a double layer. So that's why we call it pseudo, false. Pseudo means false. So falsely stratified columnar epithelium. In the respiratory tract, it could be ciliated. So we say the Epithelium of the trachea, if I ask you, what is the epithelial lining of the trachea? Pseudostratified, columnar, ciliated with goblet cells, okay? Goblet cells produce mucus. Mucus will trap dust in the air you breathe in, and cilia will propel this mucus with dust so that you cough it out or swallow, okay? What are the functions of pseudostratified columna? Absorption and secretion. That is, this is pseudostratified columnar epithelium, okay? You can see all cells are laying on the basement membrane. This is one cell, this is another cell, but the nuclei are at different positions. So it makes it look like you have two layers of cells. So it's pseudo stratified, falsely stratified. Look at the cilia, okay? This is the trachea, cilia here to propel the mucus. These are the goblet cells that produce mucus. So pseudo stratified, okay, falsely stratified, columna, ciliated cells with goblet cells. Stratified squamous, many layers of flattened cells, adapted for uh, the ability to withstand friction. So you can have dry pseudostratified um, squamous, we call it keratinized, like in the skin, or you can find it in the moist areas, pseudostratified squamous, parakeratinized or non-keratinized, like in the mouth, esophagus, anal canal, and the vagina, areas where you have friction. So many layers of flattened cells, pseudostratified squamous. Stratified cuboidal, many layers of cuboidal cells, mainly in excretory ducts of exocrine glands like the salivary glands. Then you can also have stratified columnar, many layers of columnar cells, and it's very rare. Transitional epithelium, also called uroepithelium. So 